Hello there. We're going on a little field trip today because we're not talking about coffee. We're gonna go a little bit adjacent to coffee and talk about tea. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at matcha today. It's a pretty common scenario for someone to come into a cafe and say, I don't really like coffee, but what would you recommend to me? In which case, we're probably looking at more of a tea-aligned beverage route. And most cafes nowadays, especially specialty cafes, will have matcha on the menu. And there is a lot you can do with matcha. It's a very, very, very delicious tea and also ingredients. So we're gonna talk about what it is, how to prepare it, and then three different drinks that allow you to have a little bit of fun with it. Okay, I'm excited to make these. Let's get started. Now, for those of you who aren't super familiar with matcha, this is what it looks like. It is this very, very, very finely ground green tea powder. Generally, matcha is sourced from Japan and it has a, a very interesting and really delicious flavor profile. Now, you will sometimes hear matcha described as grassy, as earthy, and those, you know, may initially sound a little bit more negative, but really, this is something that has a really, really deep, like green tea flavor. It has a little bit of umami in it. It's like slightly savory, but really high quality matcha will also have really delicious like sweetness, it's just, it's a really interesting flavor that's hard to describe. And generally people either really like it or they really don't. It's a little bit polarizing. I tend to fall on the side of really, really enjoying matcha. And I also really enjoy using it as an ingredient to pair with other flavors. But first of all, let's talk about the traditional way to make matcha, because just like coffee, this involves a good bit of preparation. Now within the world of matcha, there are very, very generally two different types that you'll most commonly see. You'll see culinary matcha and you'll also see ceremonial matcha. These are two different grades of matcha. If you are looking for matcha to have at home to drink, I would highly recommend looking for ceremonial grade matcha. This is what we have right here. This is matcha that is specifically made for drinking. Um, it is a very, very high quality flavor. It is bright. Some of the indicators that you can see with matcha are gonna be specifically in its color. You'll notice this matcha is very vibrant in color. It's a bright green. It looks fresh and when you smell it, Again, be careful while smelling, otherwise you'll get a nose full of it. When you smell it, it is very aromatic. Again, it is green tea heavy. There is like kind of a base, like earthiness to it. It just smells great. And that usually means it's gonna taste pretty good. Now, culinary matcha tends to be a little bit darker, a little bit less vibrant in color. And culinary matcha is not necessarily worse or anything. It's just made for a different purpose. It's not really made for drinking. It's made for baking or cooking or what have you. So just something to be aware of. Keep an eye out for ceremonial grade matcha when looking for matcha to drink. Now, how you prepare it, it's pretty fun and it's it's pretty easy. There are a couple tools one generally wants to have. Now, I recommend having a matcha bowl. This is something um, that has kind of taller walls. It has enough room for your whisk, which Speaking of, this right here, you might recognize this or have seen this around shops, is a matcha whisk. This is made out of bamboo. This is gonna be whisking together the matcha powder and the water into something that is very smooth and drinkable. Lastly, and these two are maybe slightly more optional, I have a little scoop for my matcha and I also have a fine sieve. So when we portion out our matcha, before we put it in the bowl, we're gonna put it through this sieve and kind of brush it out so we make sure there are no clumps that are later gonna end up in our drink. These are our tools. Let's make our matcha base. Now this base that we're about to make here can be used in pretty much any beverage you want. I'm gonna show you the more traditional way to just drink matcha on its own, but we're gonna be using the same recipe in all of the drinks we're gonna be making going forward. So just keep this base recipe in mind. Now, how I like to prepare matcha is I like to use about two grams of matcha powder. So to do that, take my scoop. And again, just gently brushing the matcha through so it falls through without any clumps. This will make your uh, whisking task quite a bit easier as well. All right, that's about two grams of matcha. Now, something I've been doing on the side here with my whisk while I've been preparing all this is actually soaking it. So I have a glass of slightly warm water and I've just put my whisk in here for about two minutes. What this is doing is kind of loosening up the bristles and making it a little bit more pliable. Now this whisk is made out of bamboo, which is a little bit more of sometimes a fragile wood. And so treating your matcha whisks with care, letting them kind of open up before you, you start whisking will allow them to last a whole lot longer. Two grams of matcha, we are now gonna add 40 grams of water to this. Now, I have water heating over here to the side. This is set to about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll just pour that on in here. Okay, 
40 grams, easy. Okay, so now we're gonna whisk and a couple notes on technique here. So we're gonna be wanting to make W or M shapes. <laughs> you can kind of reverse them, decide which letter you wanna stick with. We also wanna be conscious that we're not like scraping our whisk against the sides of the bowl. We don't wanna be pressing it down. Really a light whisk suspended in our liquid here is gonna do just fine. Usually this takes about 20 to 30 seconds. You'll notice your matcha kind of has this froth, a little bit of foaminess on top. That's what we're looking for, so. Just kind of back and forth. And again, there's no need to scrub. You wanna move it around and kind of rotate your bowl here. Make sure you get everything. And after about 30 seconds, we're left with this. Here's our base. Now, this can be drank very simply with the addition of a little bit more water. Let me uh, go grab a cup for that. This is my current favorite cup, by the way, if anyone is wondering. I'll give it one final whisk. Make sure there's nothing trapped at the bottom there. Okay, I think we look good to go. I'm gonna add my matcha. And then I'm just gonna add 60 more grams of that water that's set at 170 degrees, I suppose. <laughs> to add that, I should have my scale. So this is a small tea beverage. That's about 100 grams of water in total or 100 milliliters of water in total. Uh, you have your matcha in here and it's, it's very delicious. It is slightly savory, has a deep umami to it. It has a kind of honey-like sweetness, it's just, it's very pleasant. If you are someone who enjoys green tea, it is more than likely that you will very much enjoy this. However, you can also have some fun with matcha. So I'm gonna go get our ingredients. We have three drinks to make today. These are some of my favorite ways to combine flavors with matcha. I'm gonna go grab those, I'll be right back. I wanna give a huge thank you to Art of Tea for sponsoring today's video. Coffee and tea are too frequently pitted against each other. I couldn't think of answering the question coffee or tea when there's such a world of flavor to be found in both. Besides, if you're like me, there comes a point in the day when it's time to switch to something a little less caffeine forward, and that's where tea usually comes into my routine. Art of Tea sources some of the best organic organic teas and botanicals from around the world. Their selection is intentional, but there's certainly something for everyone. From caffeine-free options to single origins to blends to sachets to loose leaf, it's hard to go wrong. Additionally, Art of Tea carries every tea accessory that you'd ever need, whether you're a beginner or an experienced tea brewer. And as I've already shown today, I'm a huge fan of their matcha and accompanying matcha sets, but I've also been enjoying this rose black tea, a blend of black tea and rose petals that's both delicious iced and hot. It's soft and has a slightly creamy texture and aromatic florals that are hard to beat. So if you're ready to begin brewing, Art of Tea is offering my subscribers 15% off when you use the top link in the description. That's artoftea.com slash MDC for 15% off. Okay, welcome back. So we're gonna be making three drinks today. Two of these are gonna be cold, and then one of them is gonna be hot. But again, as you get used to kind of pairing flavors together, you can always change the temperature to what you like. Now, on top of all of these drinks tasting really good, I also wanted them to look pretty good. I think matcha is a very beautiful, vibrant green color, uh, and I think it's really nice to kind of represent that in pairing with other colors and in drinks that are equally as pretty. Stuff tastes good, it should look good. <laughs> we eat with our eyes, we also drink with our eyes, so <laughs> that's the principle guiding all of this. Now, the first flavor combination we're gonna do is one you may have seen before in cafes. This one is, is not uncommon to be sure, and that's gonna be matcha and strawberries. Now, I have uh, off screen already made my strawberry syrup, but let me walk you through how I did that because it's pretty easy. When making strawberry syrups, there are kind of two ways you can go. You can make them cold or you can make them hot by kind of like stewing the strawberries on the stove. I wanted to make one cold just because I'm not a huge fan of like that stewed strawberry flavor, at least not in like beverages. I think for like baking and the culinary side, it's great. But for beverages, I prefer something that holds on to a little bit more of that freshness of like a whole strawberry. So what I did was I took 200 grams of whole strawberries, cut them up, put them in a blender, along with 200 grams of cane sugar. Now for a little bit of acidity to balance this out, I added 10 grams of lemon juice. And then lastly, I also added 10 grams um, of freeze dried strawberries. Now this was specifically to give a lot of color to the syrup, but also freeze dried strawberries give a lot of strawberry flavor without adding a lot of liquid as well. So I thought that was kind of important. Again, if you wanna cut the freeze dried strawberries, you're welcome to. Your strawberry syrup might not be as punchy though. The very, very last thing I added was just about like, I think it was about 100 grams of water, milliliters of water if you prefer. Uh, and that was just to kind of loosen everything up and to allow it to blend easily. Now after blending it for about like 
a minute or so, um, you're left with basically a strawberry puree and I double strained that. The first time was through just a regular sieve. That really got all the large bits of strawberries, all the seeds out. And then secondly, I put it through a cheesecloth. Because we put it through a cheesecloth, that really reduced this down uh, to something that's very, very smooth. You don't really have any of that like strawberry <laughs> particulate, I suppose, floating around. Uh, and you're left with a syrup that is very viscous. Uh, it's nice and thick, but it's also gonna go well in a beverage, so you're not drinking chunks of strawberry. As you can see, very easily coats my spoon. Pretty thick, but also very smooth. Okay. Let's get started building our drink. This is gonna be a pretty small beverage. Uh, you can size this up to whatever you like. Uh, just kind of follow the basic ratios here. Okay. I've added about 30 grams of our fresh strawberry syrup. Now we're gonna add some ice. <laughs> I will note that already I am so sticky in this video. I'm also team large ice cube. I think large ice cubes are superior. In most beverages, there are always exceptions. We're gonna kinda, we're gonna load this up. Always refill your ice cube trays when you're done. Now you could use whatever milk you want with this. I tend to like oat milk. I think it pairs very well with matcha. If you wanna use whole milk, that is also delicious. Now remember to leave room at the top. We still have matcha to add. And once more, following the recipe we talked about at the beginning of this video, we have our matcha already prepared. So, carefully layer it over the top. Now, you can enjoy this drink as is. You can give it a stir and have at it, or we can add a little bit of freshness to kind of balance out the milkiness of the oats and then the strawberries. So for garnish, just to add a little bit of acidity, a little bit of aroma, I'm gonna plain just a tiny bit of lemon zest over the top. Again, when you're doing this, just be careful you don't go too far down, you'll get to the pith. That stuff's a little bit more bitter. Again, we don't need a ton. We just want a little bit. Okay, there is our first beverage. Now, this is a layered beverage, so of course, give it a nice mix before you enjoy, but as it is, I do think it is quite pretty. Matcha lattes in general, I think are really, really delicious and a nice kind of introductory way to tasting matcha. And this is a really good summer beverage. It's slightly fruity, it's sweet, it's balanced. It has a little bit of that like citrus aroma. It's a good start, but Let's move on to our next drink. Okay, speaking of citrus, let's move on to our next drink. This one is gonna be a little bit lighter. It's gonna be a little bit brighter. Uh, and I think this is a really, really delightful way to enjoy matcha. In fact, uh, this primary ingredient we're gonna be pairing with the matcha is one of my favorites. And that ingredient is yuzu. Now, yuzu is a citrus fruit. It is very delicious. It's, it's kind of a cross between like a lemon and maybe a lime, it's a little bit difficult to explain, but I find yuzu to be a little bit sweeter, a little bit softer of a citrus than either of those two. Uh, and you generally find it, I believe in China is where it usually grows. Now yuzu can be a little bit harder to find, uh, at least in the US. Uh, you may be able to find it at your local like Asian market, uh, but you can also find it just in the form of sodas already. So this is one of my favorite brands of soda, not sponsored, but it's a really delicious yuzu soda. This is very simple. It's just sparkling water. Uh, cane sugar and yuzu juice. So you can make this at home if you have your own yuzu. If you don't, uh, this brand is called Camino. It's really tasty. Simply enough, we're just gonna start with this. We're gonna fill up our cup most of the way. And uh, I'm also gonna drink some. Ooh, it's good. All right, now we could just pair yuzu and matcha, of course, on its own, and it would be delicious, but I wanna add a little bit of floral to this. I wanna add a little bit more complexity to our flavors. So we're gonna add about 10, maybe 15 uh, milliliters of orange blossom water. Kind of, you'll do this to taste a little bit. I'm gonna kind of eyeball this here. Just a little bit in there, not a ton. Orange blossom water and yuzu, very complimentary. Now we'll top this off a little bit more. Now, it's time to add our matcha. And of course, with all things cold, I do like a straw. Now, again, of course, with layered drinks, mix them up and enjoy. This is bright, it's citrusy, it's very, very refreshing, and it's pretty easy to make. And it's kind of a, a step up from just a standard matcha soda. Okay, 
on to our last drink. This last drink is gonna be our hot drink. And this one's gonna be a little bit more warming. Again, kind of leaning into that richness, really balancing out uh, the matcha flavor. So with this one, we're not gonna actually end with the matcha. We're gonna start with it. Two grams of matcha, 40 grams of water whisked together. Now we're gonna fill this up to about right here with water. You can kind of size this drink up or down depending on how diluted you want it to be. But for me, I believe this is about a nine ounce cup. So this is gonna be probably about six ounces of water in total. Again, I'm using water that's set at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a bit below boiling. This is just so we're kind of treating the delicate flavors of this tea correctly. We don't wanna scald or burn or kind of extract any unpleasant flavors out of this. Okay, you can set this to the side. Let's make our topper. So we're essentially gonna be making a foam that's gonna go on top of this. Now, I'm gonna do kind of a take on the foam that we use in our FOMO drinks actually at Onyx Coffee. Uh, we're gonna be using heavy cream and also coconut cream in this. I have about two ounces of heavy cream. And then I have about one ounce of coconut cream. So this is a little bit for texture, but also uh, coconut is also gonna be a really nice flavor that goes with matcha. Adding the coconut kind of takes down a little bit of that like dairy heavy bite that just heavy cream does. Okay, and then we're also gonna be adding about three quarters of an ounce of cinnamon infused simple syrup. Now, I'm gonna link down below my video on how to make infused simple syrups. It's pretty easy. Uh, we're not gonna go over it today, but cinnamon in and of itself, it might sound like a weird pairing with matcha, but actually the two go together really, really nicely. The light spice and the cinnamon pairs really well with kind of that deeper flavor of the matcha. And if you haven't tried it before, highly recommend you do. Now, if you don't wanna make an infused simple syrup, you can get away with using powdered cinnamon slash ground cinnamon, I suppose it's more commonly known as. However, I don't really recommend this. Um, it requires a bit more work. Cinnamon uh, in its ground form is pretty hydrophobic. It can be difficult to incorporate into beverages without getting just like clumps of unpleasant cinnamon. Uh, and so I don't really want you to accidentally cinnamon challenge yourself, so worth doing the syrup here. And then also you can add that syrup to really anything else you want. Now you can shake this in a shaker with some sort of agitator or you can get a little hand frother and you can froth this up. Don't do it for too long. Remember this is heavy whipping cream. If you go for too long, you will just make whipped cream and then eventually butter. So <laughs> be cautious. We just wanna add air to this so it's gonna float very, very nicely uh, on top of our beverage. Usually I end up frothing for about 30 seconds. Just be uh, cautious with how much air you're incorporating. Once you've added maybe about a third in size, like it's it's increased a third in size, you should be good to go. And then we're gonna very carefully layer this on top. Now, if you wanna be extra cautious, you can use the back of a spoon. This will help kind of delicately set the liquid on top of your other liquid. If all goes well, that is roughly what it should look like. Now I'm just gonna smooth out the top here. And then for the sake of some garnish, I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon on top. Now I know I, what I said about ground cinnamon. <laughs> you can use it as a garnish. It's just hard to mix into everything. Now you can sip through this cold foam that we have created. It will cool down the beverage and make it kind of a, a room temp as it reaches you, or you can mix this all together and enjoy. A lot of creaminess. This is a very decadent drink. That's why I like making it in a slightly smaller size. But again, it's delicious. It has that light coconut flavor to it. The cinnamon adds a lot of richness to it on top of that already delicious matcha flavor. I'm just, <laughs> I'm a big fan of all these drinks, so it's fun to make them because I then get to drink them. So these have been a couple different ways to enjoy matcha along with just generally what matcha is. Now there is a whole world of flavor pairings out there to go with matcha. So if you have any favorites that I didn't talk about today, I would love to hear it down below along with any recipes because I would love to just, <laughs> I'd love to make more recipes. So let me know in the comments down below. But in the meantime, this has been very fun. I hope you learned a little bit. Now, again, a huge thank you to Art of Tea for sponsoring this video. And if you go down to that top link below, uh, you can get 15% off. Now, I think I will take my strawberry beverage. I'll go enjoy this and then we'll, we'll see if I can make it through the rest here. But in the meantime, my name is Morgan. You can find me here on YouTube once a week plus shorts. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok or Instagram almost every single day. This has been fun. I hope you have a good week. I'll see you next time.